Hello everyone, let's try to answer these questions today. Who can access the quarantines? Do all users have access to the quarantines? How can we assign other user roles to access the quarantines? And finally, what is a custom user role? Well, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so we have six uh, predefined user roles available in the Cisco ESA, and the seventh one is a custom user role. Okay, now the administrator has access to all the quarantines and they can edit, uh, view, delete, and all that. They can do all that stuff with the quarantines. Apart from that, if we look at the operators and other user roles, we'll find that. We don't have access for these user roles um, for the quarantines. They cannot access the quarantines. And that's the default action I'm talking about. For example, you create a user, you name it what you name the user, you give it a password, you try to access the quarantines, you won't be able to. Now, when we talk about the custom uh, custom user roles, um, if you create a user with a custom user role, uh, by default, it won't have access to anything. Um, you'll have to provide it access. What do you want to give it? So depends. If you provide it access, then yes, it will have access. And this configuration option is available uh, from the system administration itself. And uh, yeah, pretty much if you want to give it access, you may. If you don't, it depends. Now, what about the other user roles? Do we have an option to provide them access to the quarantines? Well, let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so when we jump into the ESA GUI, we go to System Administration, and we go to Users, and this is the page we're going to land on. So once we are on this page, we see that these are the users that I've created. These are the user roles assigned to it. The user roles are here, and these are the user names. Okay, so I've tried to name them as similar to the user role that I've assigned to them as possible. So Custom has the user role name. Um, custom user role. And then guest has the user role guest. So the user who has the name help desk has the user role help desk user. Ready for read only operator technician has technician. And that's it. Well, the others are just, I was just playing around. Anyways, so we're going to jump into the script now. I'm going to try to run these users one, one by one in the script and try to access the spam quarantine and see if I'm able to access the quarantine or not. Well, it applies to uh, PVO as well, um, in case we configure it that way. Anyways, let's jump into the script and let's see if we are able to get it done or not. And what are the results we get? Okay, so let's check out the script. So we have the URL, which is HTTP, and then we have the IP address of the ESA, the port number on which we're trying to connect to the ESA, and then we have the resource. Okay, now the important parts of these attributes. We got end date, we got to mention it, obviously. We got the limit. We have the quarantine type, which is spam in this case. And then the final part is the start date, from which date we're gonna, uh, we are asking the script to look for this information. So we have the headers. Well, we have discussed this in one of the previous videos. How do we fetch this value? You can go ahead and check out uh, the previous video. I'll put the link in the description below where you'll find how to get this value. Okay, the rest is something that we've discussed uh, as well in the previous videos. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. Um, let's start with um, the read-only operator. Okay, so let me put in the credentials for the read-only operator. There you go. Now I'm gonna run it and let's see what we get. Okay, so as soon as I run this program, this is what I get, a 401, let's see it again. F5 and 401. So this is for the read-only operator. The read-only operator, the user, which has this user role of read-only operator does not have access to the spam quarantine, as in the defaults when we're talking about it. Now let's look at the other one. Okay, now let's take a look at the guest. If I try to log in using the credentials of guest, there you go. Save it, run it. Okay, there you go. 
you do not have permission you're not authorized basically 401 is unauthorized okay now we're going to try with the other one which is the operator let me go ahead and uh, put in the credentials there you go for the operator the user name is api we have used this in the previous videos as well let me go ahead and run this program now save it and then run what do we get 401 all right as you see we get a 401 for the operator now we're going to try for i believe the technician let's see okay so these are the credentials for the technician save it and let me go ahead and run it okay 401 unauthorized as well so we have tested all these so far these are not authorized we can see that by default we have not made any changes we're going to do it afterwards but anyways the final one help desk okay so these are the credentials for the help desk let me go ahead and put it in here now save it and run it let's see what do we get 401 yes unauthorized okay okay so i'm going to try it out for the custom user role now let me just copy the credentials for the custom user role all right i'm not sure if i made the change for the custom user role but we'll just find it out okay save it and run it ah there you go okay we do have a lot of stuff popping up okay 33 and uh, these are the total count of messages in the spam quarantine and these are the details for uh those messages okay it gives you the envelope recipient the from address the subject the to address the size of the message and the date as well so this is some pretty cool information in there so how was i able to get it with the custom user role let me show it to you on the esa how do we configure it okay so here we are at the esa we go to system administration we go to user roles in the user roles we'll find that okay so there is a user role called custom user role well this is completely customizable if i click on it you'll find that i i can go ahead and provide all of these uh, uh you know permissions to the custom user role but in this case i've just uh provided them access to the quarantines as you can see right here the others have no access and this is by default please note that okay so if i just go back to the user roles okay now this is not enough what i just showed you that's not enough you have to click here if i've if you don't see a one here that means you have not given an access to any quarantines so if i just click on it if i click on it you see that i've checked this box so basically you have this option to go ahead and check all these boxes the first one is for spam quarantine the rest is pvo okay it's totally up to you so in this case i've just given it access to the spam quarantine because this is what i was trying with in the script let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see it clearly in the system ad administration under user roles and then you click on that quarantine part where you see the one anyways once you're done um once you select this okay let me just go ahead and give it access to the policy as well so you can see the change as well uh click on submit and boom there you go you see two but do not forget to go ahead and commit the changes as well well this by itself is not enough okay so quarantine two uh, two you see that this means that you have access to two quarantines now we have spam and policy permissions available for the custom user role now okay let's see how we can do this for the other user roles as well because we don't have options to edit the other user roles here okay so how do we actually give access to the other user roles we go to monitor and then we go to spam quarantine in this case because we're giving examples with the spam quarantine so once we're here we got to click on spam quarantine not on this number or anything else well let's click on spam quarantine and here we see this option of administrative users and we got local users no users selected if i click on it it gives me the option to go ahead and select uh 
all these usernames, guest, help desk, API, and then the read-only operator username, which is ready. It does not give me option for the other usernames. Why is that? The reason is that they already have access to the spam quarantine. Right. Okay, because the only one left out is the admin. And apart from that, the custom, which is mentioned here separately. Anyways, I'm not going to uh, dive into that. That's not important. Uh, now, here we see all these pop up as soon as you selected all those. So four options here. Let me go ahead and submit and commit. Submit. Let me click on it. And commit. Let me click on it. And it's an important part. Now, it is optional to put in the comments, but this is extremely important. Okay? It does help a lot with troubleshooting as well as keeping tracks of what changes were made by which user. Okay? So, provided access to the other users. Yep, that should be good enough. I'll just click on commit changes. Okay, so as soon as I click there on commit changes, uh, it throws me here. So I'll click on spam quarantine again, and boom, there you see, we have these available. So they have access to the spam quarantine now. So how do I verify it? There are a couple of ways to verify it again. The one way was that we uh, already saw with, uh, with the script. So I'm just going to run one of these just to give an example on how it, look, uh, how it looks on the script. But anyways, you know that, but let me just show it to you real quick. And, okay, out of all of the users, who's the lucky winner that we're going to choose here? This is for the help desk. These are the same credentials I used before, and we were not able to access the spam quarantine using these credentials. Let me go ahead and run this now. Let me save it, and then F5. Brock Lesnar. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, yeah, whatever. Okay, so, um, okay, we're able to get the results with the help desk user as well. So it's working. The changes were made are working. I'm going to show you one more thing. But before that, did you guys notice that when we were there in the GUI? Let me show it to you. Now, did you notice that we have just four of these available? Well, someone's missing out here. Who's the one that we do not see here? Well, that is the technician. The technician does not have access, and we do not give access to the technician. There's no option available for that. Well, as far as I know, there's none. So we see options for only these four, not the technician. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll put a uh, link in the description below. Well, that mentions, well, that will give you an idea why technician is not mentioned in here. Well, that kind of explains all of these user roles. I'm going to Put it down in the description. It's only for those who like and subscribe. Anyways, <laughs> well, you would have access anyways. Okay, now jumping on to the last part. When you try to access the PVO or the spam quarantine using any of the user roles which do not have access to the said quarantine, then you will see this message. You do not have access to any quarantines. Now, if I go to monitor and spam quarantine okay let her refresh ah oh, that's bad i just got logged out um which one help desk how about we try that oh we did give access to help desk anyways now okay let's try with technician what do we see with technician okay let me just log in you'll find that it has restricted access okay Monitor, only two options available. System administrator, only these options available. You see, that's it for the technician because this is what the technician does. Anyways, I did mention about the article that I'm going to put in the description. Anyways, let me try to log in with a different user. Okay, so let me log off from here. And okay, now let me try. Help desk. Yes, that's correct. I remember the username. Well, anyways, let me try to log in. Let me see what we get. Okay, so the help desk only has this option available. 
spam quarantine policy and virus. Well, the help desk only had options for the message tracking, I believe, uh, because I just provided access to these quarantines. Let me go ahead and check for PVO. Ah, I just want to check that. Okay, you do not have access to any, any quarantines. Now, spam quarantine. Remember, we gave it access. Now, there you go. The help desk does have access to the spam quarantine now. It did not get that same message that we saw for the technician as an example. Now, we do see that it gives us that problem with the PBO. Whoa, okay. So, that uh, the window just crashed. Okay, let me just go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and show it to you for the PVO. How do we give access to the users in there? So I'm logged in as an administrator right now. So if I go to, for example, file analysis as an example. So you, you have to do it uh, separately for all the uh, quarantines. Now, got the same option right here. Local users, no users selected and what are the ones that are available? We got the same for. Okay, that's pretty much it. You can do it for um, the PBO as well, just uh, just like I showed it to you right now for 444. Four, four. Which one is this? File analysis. You can do it. Uh, you can do the same for the other PBO quarantines as well. When you try to, yeah, you, you can just click on any of these and then select the local users, uh, the ones you want to give access to. And then uh, based on that, the users will have access to it. Well, that's pretty much it. This is one way of, um, you know, making sure that the users that you're trying to give access to have access to it. Because when they log in, when you log in using that username, you should be able to access the spam quarantine or the PBO quarantine, whichever one you give access to. And it should not say that you do not have permissions to this quarantine. All right, so we were able to verify and accomplish all of this in today's video, who can access the quarantine, the user roles, who have access by default and who we can configure to access the quarantine and configuring the custom role for accessing the quarantine, what are the options available and how we can do it and configuring other user roles to access the quarantine, which included four user roles that we discussed. And we saw the examples for the same and verifying access where the script and the GUI, we checked that as well and how to provide access for the PBR quarantine as well. Well, thank you so much. I, I hope today's video was useful. And if you have any questions, you can put it down in the comments section. And uh, yep, thank you so much again for watching the video. You have a great time ahead and goodbye.